Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back for another video in the VLSI system series. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, just click the button and hit the bell icon so that you can get in touch with my latest content. Now in this video, we will break down the steps to draw a stick diagram for CMOS circuits. Stick diagrams are a simplified way to visualize layouts before diving into a detailed design and they are essential for planning out circuit connections. We will walk through the process step by step and give a clear example along the way. So let's get started. First, what exactly is a strict diagram? A strict diagram is a graphical representation of a layout, often referred to as the cartoon version of a chip layout. Unlike detailed layouts, strict diagrams are not drawn to scale, but they help visualize the relative positioning of transistors and connections between them. In a stick diagram, different layers are represented by colored lines. For example, red lines usually represent polysilicon, green for N-diffusion, yellow for P-diffusion, and uh, blue for metal layers, etc. This is just for reference. These elements are key to understanding how transistors and connections are visualized in the diagram. Here is a quick look at how each layer is represented. For example, polysilicon in red connects the gate of transistors, N diffusion in green forms the source and drain of NMOS transistors, P diffusion in yellow does the same for PMOS transistors, metal one in blue is used for interconnecting different parts of the circuit including power and ground. Now let's go through the steps for drawing a stick diagram. We'll break it down into seven easy to follow steps and at the end we'll put everything together with an example. So this is a follow along example tutorial. The first step is to interpret the logic level schematic and convert it into a transistor level schematic. So to perform this step you'll have to be proficient in drawing a schematic diagram given your logic equation. So you can start by identifying the transistors and interconnections between them. For each transistor give the gate source and drain a unique label. So for our example. Uh, we have a basic circuit that uses transistors A, B, C, D and E. We need to label their connections clearly. This forms the foundation of Euler paths that we will create in the next step. In this step you need to create Euler paths for both pull up and pull down networks. The Euler path is a path that traverses each transistor in a way that all connections are made once. The pull up network is typically made from PMOS transistors and the pull down network from NMOS transistors as we already know. In our example, an Euler path might follow uh, this order of A to B to E to D to C. You just need to make sure that the pull up network and pull down network both of them follow the same Euler path in order for the layout to be consistent. This ensures symmetry and minimizes wiring complexity. Next, we need to sketch the basic reference lines for the layout. So we draw horizontal lines for NMOS and PMOS transistors and vertical lines for polysilicon that will form the gate connections. Use green lines for NMOS and yellow for PMOS. This will form the foundation of the stick diagram. So for our given example, what we need to do is form the PMOS and NMOS and then draw five vertical lines because there are five inputs in our given design. And also don't forget to leave the room for metal layers which will be used for connecting the power and VDD ground rails. Now that you have your reference lines, it's time to label the connections. This step involves identifying where transistors share connections, like between the source and drain. For instance, label each point in the circuit where two or more transistors are connected. So for our given example, we will follow the Euler path. This is where Euler path comes in handy. So our decided Euler path was A to B to E to D and C. So we will label our inputs accordingly. A to B, to e, then E, then D and C. We will not label them A, B, C, D, E. This will make our connections easier and our wiring less complex. Now once your connections are labeled, place the VDD and VSS or ground lines at the top and bottom of the diagram respectively. The output node should be placed between the PMOS and NMOS transistors where the final connection occurs. Uh, in our example, VDD is placed along the top of the PMOS transistor while VSS is placed along the bottom of the NMOS transistor. The output connects the final node of the circuit. Now draw the metal lines that will carry the output signal. 
in most diagrams metal one is used for the output place this metal line horizontally across the top and bottom of the transistor to connect the output this metal line will act as the main connection for the output and it may need adjustments based on how your connections are routed finally it's time to interconnect the devices this is the most crucial part because this defines how your sources and drains are connected for both BMOS and NMOS use polysilicon to connect the gates and metal one to connect the source and drain regions avoid long side by side routing as it can add unnecessary capacitance now the goal is to keep routing as simple as possible so for our example what we need to do is refer to the schematic that we drew using the logic equation let's connect these transistors accordingly so firstly let's uh, talk about the pull-up network you can see the sources of both A and B are connected to VTD. So here is the source of A and here is the source of B. So because this is gate, so gate has um, source on one side and drain on the other side. So the source of A is here and drain of A is here. And similarly source of B is here and drain of B is here. So once this is established both sources of a and b are here so we can connect them to pdd so this completes our disconnection now what about the drains of both a and b because drain of b is connected here so it should be connected to the source of e so source of e is here and drain of e is here because they both are connected all we need to do is connect uh, these two to the drain of a so we need we put a connection in between that's this completes our connection here next is the connection of uh, e drain of e to the sources of d and c so because uh, this is drain of e and uh, it is alongside d so the source of d must be here because source is here so drain should be here and as you can see from the diagram the both d and c share their drains uh, accordingly so c's drain should be here and uh, c's source should be here so the source of c needs to be connected to the source of d and the drain of e so we put a connection here and finally the drains of both d and c are connected to the output and so we put a connection here as well this completes our pmos network our pull-up network what about the pull down network as you can see the drain of a is connected with the drain of e and d so let's assume that drain of a is here because it is alongside b so we cannot assume the drain of a here because a shares its source with the drain of b so a's source is here and drain of b is here so because a's source is here so drain of a should be here next is uh, the drain of e and d because e and d are alongside so their drains must be connected here so this we can simply put a connection of uh, this the connection of between drains of both e and d to connect them to the drain of A and also they are connected to the output so this completes our upper part now let's do the other uh, connections one by one the so source of A is connected to the drain of B so as you can see here and the source of B is connected to the ground or VSS so B's drain is here and source is here so it should be connected to ground and also b is alongside e and b and e's uh, sources are shared by vss so uh, the source of e is here and drain of e is here as we have already established and because drain of d is here so source of d uh, should be here and d's source uh, is connected to the c's drain so this is that connection and the only thing left to connect is the source of c which is here so we connect the c uh, source of c to vss and this completes our connection for this stick diagram hope this was helpful if you 
found it difficult or if you missed something just rewind and replay so that you can understand it better if you still can't understand just leave a comment below now this is the completed stick diagram for our example circuit as you can see we have used the color code lines to represent the layers and all the connections are clearly labeled by following these seven steps you can quickly sketch out the strict diagram that will help you in designing the detailed layout later on that's it for our stick diagram tutorial stick diagrams are an essential tool for visualizing your layout before jumping into detailed design and mastering them will make your layout process much smoother if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit the bell icon for more tutorials thanks for watching